Hi, I'd like to show you some interesting procedural technique in Cinema 4D to get awesome sci-fi cloth dynamic. In this tutorial, we'll find out how to use one source object, how to pin rope and cloth dynamics, how to work with mix animation and vertex maps, and how to avoid problems with both dynamic in one simulation scene. The first step is to create a group of splines with restricted rope dynamic. Let's create a helix spline. Rotate it on XZ axis and decrease start and end radius to 0. Decrease subdivision number to 10 and change intermediate points to none. Put our spline into null and rename it rope CTR. Place rope CTR into the clone and change mode to object. Now we have to create a grid that will be used like a main geometry in our scene. Create a plane and change segment to 5x5. Don't forget to rename attributes. It's important to not get confused in the process. Put our grid into the cloner and change distribution to vertex. Rotate clone's rope CTR in pitch rotation to minus 90. The next important step is to make a group of our clones a single geometry. Place cloner into the connect and turn of the weld. Rename it connect ropes. Put the rope tag on the connect rope. Check the result. Now we have to restrict our rope simulation. Turn on the mix animation by click on the with pins and put the vertex tag on the helix and add a linear field. Change direction on Y plus and length 1 cm. Change position of field in Y axis and for better display, decrease the scale. Add invert in our vertex map. Now if you play animation, you won't see the result, because nothing affects in your dynamic. Let's create a turbulent force and change the parameters. And now you can see the dynamic. Put connect rope into the sweep and extrude it by inside. Now we have to increase amplitude of your animation. Add effector shader to clone a rope and effect only on position Y. Let's use shader noise. Increase a global scale and add animation speed. Don't forget to change the minimum value down to minus 100%. For correct work, let's animate the strength of the shader from 0 to 100%. The next step is to constrain geometry with surface deformer. Let's duplicate the grid by using connect. Create a new connect without weld and refer to the grid. 
rename to Grid Edges. Place grid edges into atom array with radius 0.5 cm. To constrain received edges, we'll use the deformer surface. Put the surface inside duplicated grid edges. But before you refer to our sweep, you have to transform it into single object. Put sweep into new connect. Disable Weld, rename it Connect Ropes. Use it like reference into the deformer surface. Click Initialize and check the result. Now surface didn't work properly because we don't have enough geometry to attach. To fix that, we should dive into the sweep and make a round cap with subdivisions. Reinitialize surface and check it again. Now it's working. The third step is to add a cloth dynamic with mix animation. Let's duplicate our grid edges and rename it to grid cloth. Now we don't have enough polygons to add a cloth dynamic. Click Shift plus C to get the commander, text in the bar, subdivide and put into our grid cloth. Increase a number of subdivisions. Add a cloth tag on the grid edges. Set up your parameters. Check the result. Now we have to restrict our dynamic by using mix animation. Enable with pins. And create vertex map for the grid cloth. Now we have to pin it to atom array. But before, put atom array into the new connect without weld. Place connect edges into the vertex map with surface mode. Change the radius to 2 cm. Add the invert. Use received vertex map in mix animation. Check the result. We have some problems with intersections between rope and cloth dynamic. The easiest way to fix it is to make them separate. In the tab Simulate, let's find a simulate scene and drag it into Object Manager. Rename it to Simulation Scene Ropes. Find all relative to the rope dynamic tags and forces and drag them into Simulation Scene. And do the same for the cloth dynamic. And now, check the result. To increase amount of cells, you can change the number of the segments in source grid. But don't forget to reinitialize all surface deformers. At the final step, let's add some details. 
duplicate grid with surface deformer and rename it grid for cloner. Create a new cloner, put inside a sphere. Change the mode to object and refer to grid for cloner. Change distribution to vertex. Now we got objects at the vertex of the cells. Don't forget to rename our received cloner. Duplicate that cloner, but now change the distribution mode to edge. Now you have a geometry at the edges of the cells. Add cylinder into the cloner. Put cylinder into the symmetry with mirror Y plane and move it. Hide the grid for cloner and check the result. Let's add a thickness to received cloth. Put grid cloth into the thicken and change thickness value. We have some problems with intersections of our geometry. To fix that, create instance from thickened cloth, move it down y-axis. Create a null, rename it hidden, place inside thickened cloth and grid for cloner. Hide it from editor and from render as well. Now you got the final setup of our scene. And it would be good to cache simulation before the render. But first of all, cache rope dynamic and only after cache the cloth. If you want to avoid interactions fully, put cloth collider to geometry and you can increase number of substeps and iterations inside of simulation parameters. But it will slow down your system, be ready. I hope you are one step closer to understanding Cinema 4D. Bye, see you soon.